The time will come when men will look upon the murder of animals as they look upon the murder of men. Leonardo da Vinci, Vegetarian Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. When the mind sees that which is false, then that which is true comes into being. And then there is ecstasy, there is happiness. Please continue watching for the shared enlightening perceptions of Jiddu Krishnamurti, Vegetarian. The kind Limbu One people greet you, Sewaro, which is hello in Limbu. I am Bairagi, the soulful people of Limbu One. Thank you for your peace loving kindness to all beings. May divine love be with you and your family. Welcome to Becoming and the Self. Selections from the Book of Life by Jiddu Krishnamurti, Vegetarian on Words of Wisdom. Jiddu Krishnamurti was an internationally renowned spiritual figure born in 1895 in southern India, who to this present day is still considered one of the greatest thinkers and spiritual teachers of all time. He did not proclaim any religion, sect or country and always pointed out that we are first humans and do not need to identify with nationality or religious beliefs. From 1929 until his death in 1986, Jitu Krishnamurti travelled throughout the world talking to large audiences, individuals, scientists, religious figures, writers, philosophers, educators, as well as giving radio and television interviews. Krishnamurti's message emphasized the great need of a radical change for humankind. His deep insights on the nature of the human mind enabled him to deliver his talks in a fresh and direct way, making audience members feel like he was addressing them personally. Krishnamurti's only concern was to set humanity absolutely unconditionally free. His vision was for humans to have a more profound understanding of themselves and of the art of living, so as to bring about a new and peaceful generation. A compassionate vegetarian, the beloved Krishnamurti was also a founder of schools in India, the United States and the United Kingdom. They are based on a holistic global outlook with a concern for humanity and the environment and their interconnected relationship. The schools were established to be places where the existential concerns of life could be explored freely and responsibly. In addition, Jitu Krishnamurti was an author of numerous books. Among them are The Awakening of Intelligence, The Urgency of Change, Freedom from the Known, and The Flight of the Eagle. Let us now continue with the reading of excerpts from Jiddu Krishnamurti's book, The Book of Life. Beyond all experiencing Understanding of the self requires a great deal of intelligence, a great deal of watchfulness, alertness, watching ceaselessly so that it does not slip away. I, who am very earnest, want to dissolve the self. When I say that, 
I know it is possible to dissolve the self. Please be patient. The moment I say, I want to dissolve this, and in the process, I follow for the dissolution of that, there is the experiencing of the self. And so, the self is strengthened. So, how is it possible for the self not to experience? One can see that creation is not at all the experience of the self. Creation is when the self is not there. Because creation is not intellectual, is not of the mind, is not self-projected, is something beyond all experiencing as we know it. Is it possible for the mind to be quite still in a state of non-recognition, which is non-experiencing, to be in a state in which creation can take place, which means when the self is not there, when the self is absent. Am I making myself clear or not? The problem is this, is it not? Any movement of the mind, positive or negative, is an experience which actually strengthens the me. Is it possible for the mind not to recognize? That can only take place when there is complete silence, but not the silence which is an experience of the self and which therefore strengthens the self. What is the self? The search for power, position, authority, ambition, and all the rest are the forms of the self in all its different ways. But what is important is to understand the self, and I am sure you and I are convinced of it. If I may add here, let us be honest about this matter, because I feel that if you and I as individuals, not as a group of people belonging to certain classes, certain societies, certain climatic divisions can understand this and act upon this, then I think there will be real revolution. The moment it becomes universal and better organized, the self takes shelter in that. Whereas, if you and I as individuals can love, can carry this out actually in everyday life, then the revelation that is so essential will come into being. You know what I mean by the self? By that, I mean the idea, the memory, the conclusion, the experience, the various forms of nameable and unnameable intentions, the conscious endeavor to be or not to be, the accumulated memory of the unconscious, the racial, the group, the individual, the clan, and the whole of it all. Whether it is projected outwardly in action or projected spiritually as virtue, the striving after all this is the self. In it is included the competition, the desire to be, the whole process of that is the self. And we know actually when we are faced with it that it is an evil thing. I am using the word evil intentionally because the self is dividing, the self is self-enclosing, its activities, however noble, are separated and isolated. We know all this. We also know that extraordinary are the moments when the self is not there, in which there is no sense of endeavor, of effort, and which happens when there is love. When there is love, self is not. Reality, truth is not to be recognized. For truth to come, belief, knowledge, experiencing virtue, pursuit of virtue, which is different from being virtuous, all this must go. The virtuous person who is conscious of pursuing virtue can never find reality. He may be a very decent person. That is entirely different from the man of truth. From the man who understands, 
to the man of truth, truth has come into being. A virtuous man is a righteous man, and a righteous man can never understand what is true, because virtue to him is the covering of the self, the strengthening of the self, because he is pursuing virtue. When he says, "I must be without greed," the state in which he is non-greedy and which he experiences strengthens the self. That is why. It is so important to be poor, not only in the things of the world, but also in belief and in knowledge. A man rich with worldly riches, or a man rich in knowledge and belief, will never know anything but darkness, and will be the center of all mischief and misery. But if you and I, as individuals, can see this whole working of the self, Then we shall know what love is. I assure you that is the only reformation which can possibly change the world. Love is not the self. Self cannot recognize love. You say I love, but then, in the very saying of it, in the very experiencing of it, love is not. But when you know love, self is not. When there is love. Self is not understanding what is. Surely, a man who is understanding life does not want beliefs. A man who loves has no beliefs. He loves. It is the man who is consumed by the intellect who has beliefs, because intellect is always seeking security, protection. It is always avoiding danger. And therefore, it builds ideas, beliefs, ideals behind which it can take shelter. What would happen if you dealt with violence directly now? You would be a danger to society. And because the mind foresees the danger, it says, "I will achieve the ideal of non-violence ten years later," which is such a fictitious, false process. To understand what is is more important than to create and follow ideals because ideals are false, and what is is the real. To understand what is requires an enormous capacity, a swift and unprejudiced mind. It is because we don't want to face and understand what is that we invent the many ways of escape. And give them lovely names as the ideal, the belief, God. Surely, it is only when I see the false as the false that my mind is capable of perceiving what is true. A mind that is confused in the false can never find the truth. Therefore, I must understand what is false in my relationships, in my ideas. In the things about me, because to perceive the truth requires the understanding of the false. Without removing the causes of ignorance, there cannot be enlightenment. And to seek enlightenment when the mind is unenlightened is utterly empty, meaningless. Therefore, I must begin to see the false in my relationships with ideas, with people, with things. When the mind sees that which is false, then that which is true comes into being, and then there is ecstasy, there is happiness. For more information on Jiddu Krishnamurti and his teachings, please visit jkrishnamurti.org and kfoundation.org. Noble viewers, we hope you have enjoyed today's program on words of wisdom. Coming up next is the Stone Painter, Part Three of Four. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more constructive programming. May you and your loved ones be forever embraced by God's love. Vegan, you turn heads when you're walking. 
Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule y suprememastertv.com barra inclinada w o w. I nostri programmi sono offerti in molte lingue. Consultate suprememastertv.com barra schedule e suprememastertv.com barra w o w 